Hello and welcome to Region Locked. Sonic the Hedgehog, a video game superstar who was perhaps considered one of the strongest icons of gaming, and though more recently having fallen from grace, continues to have a strong presence within the industry. Games themselves, however, have evolved, and another icon of the industry was the stoic arcade machine, the tall structure that intimidated the young and the penniless. Nostalgia is an incredible thing, with many who have a keen interest in games wanting to explore the youth of the industry and see that which made it grow. So why then is there a Sonic the Hedgehog arcade game which has never seen publication in the huge number of compilations released by Sega for the many consoles over the many years? Well, let's find out together as we take a look at the classic Japanese arcade title, Sega Sonic the Hedgehog. Sega Sonic the Hedgehog was released in 1993, and though it could be found outside of Japan, it had an extremely limited run, to the point that those who frequented arcades at the time weren't even aware the machine existed, nor that it was ever released within their country. The cabinets that did make their way overseas were said to be entirely identical to their Japanese counterpart, to the point of having the game's text and voice acting entirely in Japanese as well. Not just in typical arcade game style, but also the style of Sonic the Hedgehog, the game's plot is mostly relegated to the back seat, only taking place as a means of giving some sort of explanation as to what the player's goals are as they play the game. The game's plot is delivered through cutscenes which play at the start of the game, as well as briefly occurring between stages. The game's story involves Sonic alongside two characters who were introduced to the Sonic franchise within this title, Ray the Flying Squirrel and Mighty the Armadillo. The trio have been kidnapped by Dr. Eggman, and have been taken to Eggman Island, a hazardous environment infested with traps to keep the heroes occupied. The three anthropomorphic marathoners team up to better their chances of escape, working together to survive Eggman's perilous threats as they try to reach Eggman's tower. The game is viewed from an isometric perspective, unlike any Sonic game that had come before, but which would later be seen again with the likes of Sonic 3D. Unlike most games, Sega Sonic is played with only a single button and a trackball, which must be rolled to move the characters on screen. By pushing this button, the player is able to perform the iconic Sonic Spin Jump. These controls are sometimes color-coded to the character which they operate, with some cabinets allowing for three-player multiplayer. The game is broken up into seven stages, all taking place on Eggman Island, with the player attempting to reach the end of each stage as quickly as possible, though, as with most Sonic games, his desire for speed can lead to a huge boost in difficulties in control. Courses are linear in nature, and will throw an unfettering barrage of threats to the heroes. There are only a few enemies scattered throughout the entire game, and on top of that, only one section that even remotely resembles a boss battle found midway through the game. Most of the game's challenge is in avoiding hazards from the game's arenas. Unlike most Sonic titles, the player has a health gauge, though rings are still used as a way of regaining life. These rings are scattered throughout stages, as well as being hidden inside walls and obstacles. Unsurprisingly, rings are also used as a way of improving a player's score, with additional points being awarded should half of the stage's rings be collected. In multiplayer, the bonus is awarded to the player who collected the most rings. Sega Sonic the Hedgehog's life is a curious one for fans of the series. Considering its relative obscurity, there is not a lot of information surrounding the events that led to its release. During the 90s, Sega was perhaps one of the biggest owners of arcades across not just Japan, but also worldwide. Their origins came from their extremely popular arcade titles, more so than their home consoles. Yet their biggest mascot was made in the Blue Hedgehog Sonic, a character who could only be found attached to their home systems. It's believed that this was the reasoning behind Sonic's eventual appearance within Sega Sonic for arcades, as it would give Sega's arcade connection some tie to their iconic mascot. 
As for the game's name, and the reason behind the inclusion of Sega attached to Sonic's name, was due to a legal issue involving rival arcade manufacturer Taito. Taito filed a trademark application for their game, Sonic Blast Man, on December 10th, 1990. This was exclusive to arcade video games and machines. However, three days before this, Sega also filed a trademark for Sonic, leading up to the upcoming release of their first game on the Genesis. This covered arcade video games, machines, and all kinds of merchandise. Japanese trademark applications take two to three years to process, so to avoid dispute, Sega filed a trademark for Sega Sonic a year later on December 11th, 1991. Taito's trademark was approved two years after on June 30th, 1993. This specified that the trademark deal dealt exclusively with arcade punching games, metal games, coin pushes, and UFO catches. However, it wasn't until 1996 that the Sonic trademark went through for Sega. Rumors of a home port of Sega Sonic had circulated in the likes of gaming outlet CVG, with the suggestion that it may be converted for the Sega 32X, though this ultimately never came to fruition. Mighty would later go on to appear as a major role within Knuckles' Chaotix as a playable character in 1995, two years after his limited debut. While Ray wouldn't show up for a significant number of years within Sonic's games, both he and Mighty would make continued appearances through the Sonic the Hedgehog comic series created by Archie Comics. The two characters were also referenced together within Sonic Generations, where they can both be seen on a missing persons poster in the City Escape stage. Ray and Mighty had been considered for an earlier playable reappearance within Sonic Heroes, appearing on a team alongside Metal Sonic, though this never came to fruition. In 2018, Sonic Mania Plus was announced, bringing both Ray and Mighty back into the limelight. This updated version of Sonic Mania gave players the chance to play as both heroes for the first time since Sega Sonic, which many would have never played at all. Ray's return was 25 years in the making, while Mighty's brief stint in Knuckles' Chaotix made his absence only 23 years. During an interview with Famitsu, Sonic series producer Takashi Iizuka spoke on the two characters being brought back into circulation. He considered them both as sealed characters, and that they wouldn't ever be added to a Sonic title again. But after many requests, they were, on top of the fact that with Sonic Mania, the team were squeezing in all series materials aimed for specific manias, so the stage for them to appear has already been prepared. Prior to their reappearances, the Sonic community had found a keen interest in both of these fallen stars, despite, or perhaps as a result of, their complete lack of fleshed-out background. It was likely that this interest was actually the true reason for both characters to be brought back into circulation, particularly within Sonic Mania, as the game was created as a way of appeasing fans of the classic Sonic franchise. Sega Sonic was also the first game in the Sonic universe to give the characters voices. With Sonic's voice being supplied by famed Japanese voiceover artist Takeshi Kusao, best known for his work as Trunks from the Dragon Ball Z series, and Yusuke Numata portraying Mighty the Armadillo, also known for his work as a wide variety of characters from Dragon Ball as well. Rei was voiced by Hinako Kanamaru, a relatively unknown voice actress, otherwise known for her role as Yai from the Mega Man NT Warrior anime series, while Robotnik's voice was supplied by Masaharu Saito who has worked on many shows, though again, probably best known as Master Roshi from Dragon Ball. It is clear by looking through the data of Sega Sonic that the game was definitely intended for an international release. At the time of Sega Sonic's creation, ABC's Sonic the Hedgehog cartoon series was being beamed to television sets across the Western world, with what has been formally dubbed Sonic Sat AM. This series of the Sonic franchise differed significantly from its origins, with a more dark and broody design, particularly noteworthy with the creator's take on a dystopian Mobius and the Dr. Robotnik that would inhabit it. 
Sega Sonic would have made use of this changed design overseas, with redesigned graphics already having been created when it was released in Japan. Within the game's data is an almost complete set of graphics that would replace Dr. Eggman with this cartoon's design of Dr. Robotnik. Alongside these changes in design, other graphical elements can be uncovered from searching through the game's unused data. These include fully translated English dialogue boxes that would have appeared throughout the game, with one having the game's villain referred to as both Robotnik and Eggman, possibly as the team were unsure on which would be used should an international release be made. The limited international release meant that machines could only really be found in places such as the now permanently closed London Sega World, Arcade Odyssey in Miami, and Galloping Ghost Arcade in Chicago. Considering that these international machines are still without a specified regional version being programmed in, still retaining all Japanese, it's easy to say that Sega did not invest in an array of machines for international shipping. Those that did play the game considered it to be a worthwhile play, breaking expectations with a high level of polish on not just the game's graphics, gameplay, and audio, but the variety of design in its levels. The reason that such a highly praised game never saw any form of re-release, despite the less well-received arcade titles Sonic the Fighters receiving a port, comes down to one very simple issue. Controls. Yuji Naka, former head of Sonic Team, was asked by GameSpy in 2005, during the run-up to the release of Sonic Gems Collection, whether he had any involvement in the project and whether or not the game would see a place in the compilation. He stated, That's another one that was developed outside of my control. It was done by part of the Sega Arcade division at the time. We did think about adding it to Gems Collection, though, but we couldn't implement it in the end because the game used a trackball control scheme that is very, very difficult to replicate with a standard controller. It is a pretty fun and unique little game, though. It's a great shame that this machine won't be easy to find for all of you to enjoy, but why not enjoy some other videos on region-locked games, like the official Pokemon games released on a Sega console, or Deep Fear, Sega's Japanese and European exclusive Saturn survival horror game. For more region-locked, check out the links on screen.